It's either a science fiction series set in the Old West or a Western with a few science fiction elements. It's unfortunate we didn't think of this sooner. But either way, it turned out about as well as that Steven Seagal film set on Mars. I can't write this stuff anymore. Legend. Mr. Legend. <laughs> I believe I may have underestimated you. Well, that's nice. I'm used to being overestimated. Legend is a short-lived show from the mid-90s, nominally a western with a few science fiction gadgets thrown in. In 1995, Paramount had launched its own TV network in North America, UPN, with its own flagship program, Star Trek Voyager. Of course, they broadcast other primetime shows, but most, including Legend, were gone by the end of its first season on air. Now it's delightfully useless, and we shall follow this useless research wherever it may take us. That's the spirit. Ex-Star Trek writer Michael Piller and writer-producer Bill Dial created a story for a movie, but with UPN needing material, this became the pilot for a show about Nicodemus Legend. Except it's more about the guy who wrote Nicodemus Legend being mistaken for his most popular creation, Nicodemus Legend. What's a Nicodemus? Well, without doing much research, he's a name from the Bible and definitely, definitely not the inventor of the cigarette. Ah, so if you're still watching, at one time, westerns were everywhere. On television, in the movies, in books. Then they went east to Spain and things got weird. TV westerns were still launched, but by the 70s and 80s, successful ones were rarer than a Porsche driven by a hen's dentist. Imperative, you meet public appearance obligations. Stop. Last legend novel, barely recouped expenses. Stop. If contract not complied with, advance on next book for oh, but Stop! stop. Fox had already cancelled the Bruce Campbell series Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. just a year or two before Legend. That series had melded western set action adventure with science fiction elements but lasted 27 episodes before Fox did what it always did to a promising genre show with a growing fan base. It cancelled it. The Vault of Almost has its own wing of Fox programs. Not so hard! <laughs> A western with some science fiction influences had only really had any success with the 60s series Wild Wild West. By and large, western series tend to stay in their own lane. People rode horses rather than motorbikes, apart from the ill-fated western Rebel Without a Horse. Despite all of this, UPN ordered up a legend series from Paramount, with the show premiering with a two-hour episode in April 1995. Yes, I am taller in real life. Richard Dean Anderson had made his name on the TV series MacGyver, which ran for seven seasons. In Fun Facts I Pretend I Didn't Already Know, he did not in fact play Oscar Goldman in The Six Million Dollar Man. People tell me that they are two completely different people. I mean, look at them without my glasses or medication. They look the same to me. Never mind about that. In Legend, he would play Ernest Pratt, a popular writer who's continuously confused with his literary creation, a gadget-loving adventurer known as Nicodemus Legend. All I ask is that you be Nicodemus legend for two hours, smile at the people, and sign some books. It's gotten to the point where the association with his fictional creation is threatening his existence. I think you're confusing me with the hero about whom I write. You see, I'm, I'm not Nicodemus legend. I'm no hero. Such is the general public's inability to tell fact from fiction. He meets an eccentric Hungarian scientist, Janos Bartok, who is taken to bringing to life the outrageous gadgets outlined in Pratt's books. I thought your last book lacked some of the creative fire of your earlier works. The catalyst for Pratt having to go from full-time writer slash carouser to part-time adventurer. Change the course of a river, did I? That's right. Hmm. How did I do that? I don't know. He's discovered Bartok has been creating gadgets inspired by Pratt's dime store novels and helping out folk in legend's name. This has now come back to bite Pratt on his backside. Bartok suggests Pratt take on more of the personality of his creation, legend. Who I am is Ernest Pratt. And Ernest Pratt is wise enough not to get caught in a crossfire between bank detectives and a ruthless bandit killer. In other words, to basically play the character for real. Pratt's publisher and the townsfolk all seem keen to treat Pratt and Legend as one in the same. It's a little like if you wore the same costume every Halloween, say Freddy Krueger, but your sleep deprived neighbours kept calling the cops on you. These people have rolled out the red carpet expecting to see Nicodemus Legend. 
And look at you. Pratt really, really, really doesn't want to play the part of legend. And that's where things start to fall apart. Legend is a clean living and modest hero, while Pratt wants nothing more than to gamble and drink and chase women in his spare time. It would be bad for business if people saw me give you hard liquor. And he's completely uninterested in playing the hero. What? In many episodes, he has to be cajoled, threatened, shamed, or otherwise railroaded into taking on a case. He did something that I find completely unforgivable. He put his life into your hands? Exactly. It's like Auntie Beryl guilt tripping you into taking her to the emergency room when she tried to jump off a roof into the swimming pool shouting, I am a golden god. But Ernest, what if some misfortune were to befall me? Don't you feel the obligation to assist and protect? No. The locals of Sheridan, Colorado, the town that Pratt now calls home, are happy to have the famous Nicodemus legend as a leading citizen in that he brings in the tourist bucks. It's the official legend undershirt. Most seem happy to ignore Pratt's protestations that he's not the fictional character in the books. It's just a book! Bartok, a former rival of Thomas Edison, seems happy enough to invent gadgets for legend to use, including a car, a floating platform, and a stun gun. Before I conceived of the rain tower, I dreamt that Thomas Edison was eating my brain. Night after night after night. Bartok is backed up by his assistant, Ramos. People of Sheridan don't understand you. Some are even afraid of you. And legend has an unofficial flunky in the form of Skeeter. Then there's my hair. I like it. But even with the kooky gadgets, the stories are fairly standard 90s action-adventure western tales with the gadgets being helpful in saving the day, but generally not the sole reason for Legend's victories. The anachronistic gadgets add a little colour to the series. One dot means enemy to the right. We meet a few famous historical figures, President Grant, Wild Bill Hickok and General Custer. Lucky fella that Custer. Some people always seem to be in the right place at the right time. We see some really nice visitors, courtesy of the extensive Arizona location work. And of course, with the gadgets comes special effects. 1990s era video effects. Boy, when that caffeine kicks in, I'm a wild man. The opening credits promise us a lot of ocular wear. There are clips of legends in spectacles, goggles, magnifying lenses, and all manner of protective eyewear. However, in the show itself, the ratio of goggle to non-goggle scenes is woefully lacking. Roll with it, Lyle. I have to. I guess the budget for goggles just wasn't big enough. It's your half of Nicodemus legend, therefore, ergo so, you have to go too. The tone of the show is hard to pin down. Yes. It's a lot of parts. Part American revisionist western, part wild wild west, part northern exposure. Of course, I always cooperate. It's the participate part that could be the problem. It's clearly aiming to be quirky and occasionally funny, but never seems to find a rhythm. Because I don't trust a man who doesn't drink. And I need to trust you. On that score, I'm the most trustworthy man alive. It's a show where there's just enough to keep you watching, but very little to make you remember what you've actually watched. Oh, God's sake. The characters aren't quirky enough to be memorable. Like this channel, the joke's only occasionally funny enough to raise an audible titter, and you're really just left with a just decent action adventure series. Legend has an energetic soundtrack that does a good job of setting the scene, and I can't fault the production values. It doesn't particularly look cheap. I'm not Legend, I'm Pratt. Ernest Pratt. Legend was a show that UPN had hoped would help launch its new channel, though ratings and management changes saw the show and almost everything else other than Voyager cancelled by the end of the season. Can you direct me to the sheriff? Well, you see that building there? Big sign says sheriff? Yeah. We have Legends 12 episodes, and, well, it's not terrible, nor is it brilliant. It's an idea that had some potential. <laughs> Legend hasn't aged terribly, apart from the fact it's likely to be stuck as a standard definition program without very expensive remastering. Damn. Which, for such a short-lived series from Paramount, is as likely as a subway that doesn't smell somewhat of stale piss. I was mentioning to the professor that your later books were a bit predictable. Yes, well, my audience has grown to expect a certain value 
for their dive. While I knew of the show, I'd never seen it before. And as I was curious, I was expecting something a little more interesting than what's on offer in these dozen or so episodes. I normally enjoy the cast of Legend in other shows, but here they seem like they're wasted. John Delancey brightened up many Star Trek productions. And MacGyver, I mean MacGyver. Oh, and okay, Stargate. And the actors playing Ramos and Skeeter get almost nothing to do. Thank you. But Legend, unfortunately, despite the cast and the ambition, has to be marked as a wasted opportunity and a miss. In essential viewing, just like dressing up your budgerigar for Halloween. Sometimes in unearthing a short-lived series, you uncover a gem. And sometimes you just find an IOU. What? In reviewing Legend, the entire time I wished I was checking out Briscoe County Junior instead to see if that was as good as I remembered. Actually, that gives me an idea. What? Until we meet again. Legend is a show that is okay. It's watchable, likeable even. Really? But hardly the stuff of Legend. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, leave a comment below, or check out some of our other videos. Name me one stagecoach robber that has ever come up from behind. You can't! Because you rob a stagecoach from the front.